Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Azure Content YouTube channel. Uh, so today we are going to start a new playlist related to Azure SQL, where we will be diving deep into SQL knowledge. We all know that how SQL Server and writing SQL queries, uh, all of these are very important in the field of Azure Data Engineering. So it's very important to have a good level of hands-on experience with SQL or any of the data warehouse or data management tool. For example, Synapse SQL or uh, MySQL, PostgreSQL, where the data is getting stored in your project. Okay, so with this, let's first understand what is SQL. So whenever we say SQL, it is nothing but SQL. Okay, so SQL is nothing but SQL and it stands for structured query language okay so it's a it's basically a language which helps us to query the data or analyze the data and manipulate the data so basically it's a language which helps to query manipulate and analyze the data and where is that data stored it's basically stored in the relational table okay it's stored in the relational table inside database inside sql server okay so inside sql server we can have multiple databases and inside the database we can have multiple tables where we would have several data okay so now how to connect to this sql server okay so in order to connect to the sql server we have something called ssms which stands for SQL Server Management Studio. Okay. So this needs to be installed in your local in order to connect to the SQL Server. Now there are multiple ways through which we can create this connection between SSMS and the SQL Server. So the first way is Windows authentication. If your SQL Server is present in the on-premise or in local, then we use this method of authentication, which is Windows authentication. So if our data lies in on-premise in our local system, which means if our SQL server is present in our local, then we would use Windows authentication. If it is present in cloud, for example, Azure SQL database, then we cannot use Windows authentication. We need to go for other option, which is either SQL authentication, where you need to provide user ID and password. Okay. So either we can use SQL authentication in case of when the server is present in the cloud, or else we have something called Azure Active Directory authentication which is also known as intra id authentication okay so earlier it was used to call active directory now it is changed to intra id so if your uh, data is present in cloud we can also go for intra id authentication so in this video we will be going ahead with creation of azure sql server and azure sql database so for that either we can authenticate using sql authentication or Entra ID authentication. If we talk about which authentication method is more better, more robust, and more secure, then the answer is Entra ID authentication. So this is more secure. But if we talk about which option comes as a handy option, which is more easier, then we can say it is SQL authentication. Okay. And it also allows many of the external services and resources to connect to the SQL with the help of this authentication method for example if we talk about adf so adf does not have an option to connect via intra id authentication but it has option to connect via sql authentication so this method comes more handy when we talk about connecting with some external resources okay but in this video we are going to create a sql server azure sql server and we are going to use intra id authentication to login into sql server and to access the data and in the next video we will also cover this sql authentication part so please stay tuned so let's go to the demo part so now i am going to create a resource in azure portal and i'll be searching for azure sql database okay so let me search for that 
So in the marketplace, you can search for Azure SQL. So you can see this Azure SQL option is present and let me hit on create. And here you can see SQL database, SQL managed instance, SQL VM. So I'm going to go ahead with SQL database and the resource type, I'm going to select the default, which is single database. So let me create a single database. And you need to select the subscription and resource group. So I'm selecting the existing resource group. And then I need to provide the database name. So let me give the name as a new demo DB. Okay. And you can see this name is valid. And then the SQL server, let me create a new SQL server saying a new demo SQL server. So let's wait. Yeah. So validation is completed. You can select the location. I'm going to go ahead with the default location is US. And now here you can see the authentication method. By default, it is selected as use intra only authentication, which is the most secure authentication method. And this is the most reliable way to block all the insecure access and attacks happening to the SQL server. Okay, so we can go ahead with this default option, which is intra only authentication. Other options are both SQL and intra authentication. And the third option is only SQL authentication. So we are going to go ahead with intra only authentication for this video. And then you can see we can set one intra ID as the admin for this SQL server. So let me set myself as the SQL admin. So let me search for my name here. You can see. Let me select this and the admin is selected. Let me click on OK. So we are good. And I'm going to have this for de uh, demo purpose. So I'm selecting development instead of production. And here you can see compute plus storage. Let's configure the database. So I'm going to go ahead with general purpose, which is the most budget friendly option. And then for compute tier, there are two options provisioned and serverless. The default is serverless where the resources would be auto scaled, which means if you need more GB of data, then it would automatically scale up. And if you need less GB of data, then it will be automatically scaled down and the cost will also come according to the usage. So you can see with this configuration, the estimated cost per month is around 398 INR, which is Indian rupees. But if we go for provision, here the resources are pre allocated and and according to that we have to pay and the estimated cost you can see is around 18,000 INR. So I'm going to go ahead with serverless. So please be mindful while selecting this because you can see the cost difference between provision and serverless. Okay, so maximum V course we can keep it less if it is just for demo purpose. GB size also I don't need much more. So let me select this and then we need to select whether we want to have the backup of data locally or on the zone level or in the geo level. So I am fine with the default LRS option and let's go to networking. So here I'm not going to touch anything. Let it be default right now. Let me go next and here everything looks good. Let me go to next and let me hit on review plus create. Let's wait until the SQL database gets created. So you can see deployment has been initialized. So deployment is in progress right now. So now you can see the deployment is completed. Let me go to resource and it opened the database view and you can see the server name is this one. Let me go to the server level and here in the settings you can see intra ID. So you can see this is the option which we selected while creating the SQL server in order to have intra ID only authentication. So if you want to move away from intra only authentication, then you just need to deselect this checkbox. OK, so right now I am the admin. You can see the admin name here. So now let's try to access this server and the database present within this server using SSMS. OK, so I have the SSMS installed in my local system. So here you can see server type should be database engine and server name we need to provide here. So I'm going to go in the server overview 
and here you can see the server name okay so this is the server name that we need to provide let me copy this and let me paste it here so server name dot database dot windows dot net and then in authentication method here you can see either we can go with windows authentication sql authentication or any of the azure active directory authentication so as we have already discussed windows authentication is for on premise sql server and sql authentication we have not enabled as of now so i am going to go ahead with this one which is azure active directory universal with mfa which is multi factor authentication okay and here in the username i am going to give my username of my entra id okay so let me give the email id which is nothing but my entra id okay now let me hit on connect so let's wait so you can see it has given a pop up where it is trying to sign in into my microsoft account so let me provide the password which is the same password for my azure portal and let's try to sign in so it has given an error let's read through it so it says connection was denied since deny public network access is set to yes to connect to the server use private endpoint from inside your virtual network so i'll show you what happened let me go to the server and search for networking so you remember in the networking part we had just skipped with the default options so you can see all the public network access has been disabled so let me go to selected networks and then let me add my client ip address to whitelist my ip address okay so it's updating let's wait so now the firewall rules has been updated now let me again click on connect and let's see if it helps in connecting to the sql server so this time you can see we did not get any error and our ip has been whitelisted and we are inside the sql server now so let me expand the database and let me connect to this database okay so since i am connected to the sql server with the help of my entra id which is set as an admin so i would have all the admin access i can create table i can insert rows in it i can delete the table i would have all the ddl and dml permissions so let's try to create a table create table and let me give the table name as demo table let's give id as integer and name varchar say 20 okay let me run this i have ran this command and the table completion is done and let's try to view the table select star from demo table okay let's run this particular statement and you can see the table let's try to insert a row into this demo table say one and no so let's run this and now one row got affected and you can see data entry is done and we can drop the table as well so you can see the table has been dropped successfully so basically with my entra id i am able to perform all the commands because my entra id is set as the admin in this sql server and it has got all the admin permissions okay so this is how you can access the sql server with the help of entra id so that's it for this video guys i hope you find this video helpful please stay tuned for the next upcoming videos as well so please like this video and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet thank you